Hi, I reviewed this Unity UT8805E 5.5 digit bench multimeter a few episodes ago, and I was really impressed by its build quality and capability. I will leave links to the review and teardown videos in the video description below in case you haven't watched those videos yet. Now, one specification that is very impressive is its input impedance in voltage ranges under 20 volts. According to the spec sheet, the input impedance is greater than 10 gigaohms in the 200 millivolts, 2 volts, and the 20 volts ranges. With the equipment in my lab, we are actually able to measure this. So in today's video, I'm going to measure and confirm the input impedance in the DC voltage measurement mode with my Keithley 614 electrometer. The Keithley 614 electrometer can measure current down to the picoamp range with a resolution of 10 femtoamps. And it can also measure resistance up to 200 gigaohms. I haven't had the need to use this meter lately, so this just gives me an excuse to fire it up. And because of the high input impedance, the Keithley 614 uses a triax cable for the input. And if you look at the connector here carefully, you will see this is not your traditional BNC here. And the cable itself, by the way, is not cheap. I think just for the triax cable itself, I paid more than $100. And you can see this is not your ordinary cable. It has not only the outer shielding, it has also an inner shielding. And that inner shielding is essentially the guard, which surrounds the inner conductor. So besides your typical black and white leads you find in a BNC to banana plug cable, you also get this green connector here, and that is connected to the inner shielding, which is the guard terminal. The guard is driven to the same potential as the center conductor of the cable, which is where the red alligator clip is connected to. So this eliminates the current leakage to the ground and also removes parasitic capacitance due to charging and discharging. As the center conductor and the guard essentially is at the same potential, there's no current leakage between the two. In our measurements today, let's not worry about the guarding, but in case you are interested, I had made a video explaining guarding a long time ago, and you can check that one out. I'll leave a link in the video description below. All right, let's set things up. For the Unity, I'm gonna use these short leads so that the results can be more accurate as we don't have to worry about the long leads effect. So let's plug those in and let me power it up. And you remember, when we first power it up, it will be in this automatic mode. So let's actually change the measurement here to, let's say, range to, let's do two volts. And speed, I'll leave it as slow. And the input impedance, let's leave it as auto, as this is a 10 gig ohm. And the other range you can see is a 10 mega ohm. So let's leave it as 10 gig ohm. And now let me connect the triax to the Keithley 614. And we'll power it on. And you can see we are already in resistance measurement mode. Currently the range is 20 gig ohm. So that is actually all set. And you can see that without anything connected, the reading is increasing as it is trying to measure the resistance. So now let me connect the input of the multimeter to the Keithley here. And we'll try to not touch the surroundings here as it could impact our reading. So let's uh, rearrange a little bit. We'll make sure everything is up here. And let's wait till the reading stabilizes. And right now you can see the reading is hovering about 11 to 12 gig ohms. So you can see that indeed the input impedance we are measuring here is greater than 10 gig ohms, sitting at right around 12 gig ohms for the input range of 2 volts. And let's switch to a different range to see what we get here. So let's change it to 200 millivolts and you can see that we have the same input impedance and let's change it to 20 volts so now we have pretty much confirmed that the three ranges under 20 volts all have the capability of high input impedance up to above 10 gig ohms and just to confirm let's actually increase the range to let's say 200 volts and now you can see that we actually drop down so let's try to measure that this would be, let's do a mega ohm. And you can see that indeed we're reading just about 10 mega ohm. Of course, we can improve the resolution a little bit. You can see that it's indeed just 10 mega ohms. So let's go back to the 20 gig ohms. And let's change the range back to 2 volts.
Again, when the reading stabilizes, you can see that we are getting that greater than 10 gig ohms input impedance. And just out of curiosity, let's change the measurement update speed and see if that has any impact on the input impedance here. So currently it's set at slow. Let's change it to medium. And you can see that we're actually getting higher input impedance. And by the look of it, it tops at around 20 gig ohms. And finally, as a word of caution, I just want to show you that measuring the input impedance could be a little bit tricky. Here I have swapped the input leads. As you can see, now the black is hooked up to the positive and the red is hooked up to the negative. And in theory, it shouldn't cause any issue, but you can see we are having a little bit of variance in the measurement result. And actually right now it's a little bit lower compared to what we had the other way around. And this is because there's some active circuitry behind the scene. It's not just a resistor here. So definitely that will impact your measurement result here. So let's change it to medium and see if we get the same reading here. So you can see that we're stabilizing at around 14.1 gig ohms input impedance when the measurement speed is set at medium. So let's change it to fast and see what we got. And you can see we're roughly getting the same 14.1 gig ohms input impedance. And what I've demonstrated here is that measuring the input impedance can be very tricky. And that's why in the spec, it only tells you approximately what the input impedance is, is for this very reason. What we can see though from this exercise is that the input impedance is definitely above 10 gig ohms. So let's actually change it back to slow. And let's change the leads back to the typical measurement setting. And once again, we're stabilizing at around 11 gig ohms. And that's pretty much what I want to demonstrate today. Now you know the true input impedance of the UT8805E. I hope you enjoyed this short video. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.